Get it sorted. A rubbish film. No, 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 no. A, a film about rubbish. <gasps> Jack! So, what are we doing today? You know exactly what we're doing today. Um. Remind me again. You're making a rubbish film? Oh. Bits of thesis, even for you, Anika. About rubbish. We're making a film about rubbish. You know, waste. Oh, okay, waste. I'm with you. Just get the camera set up, Jack. Now, please. Take it your first up presenting, then. <sighs> set the camera up, Jack. We're looking at waste, Jack. It's a plastic bottle, Jack. Jack, I heard you. Are you ready? Okay, okay. One second. Great. <sighs> At speed and action. Hello, my name's Anika Desai and I'm here today to talk about waste disposal. Do you know Merseyside residents produce up to 700,000 tonnes of household waste each year? Of that, two thirds is buried at landfill sites and we actually only recycle about one third of our waste. The thing is, we're running out of landfill sites fast and simply burying our rubbish just isn't the answer. Recycling is. Cut that, Jack. Got that, Anika. 700,000 tonnes. Unreal. You ready, Nika? Yep. And go. Glass never breaks down in Earth. And by way of an example, glass left by the Egyptians over 3,000 years ago has been discovered recently. Oh, and on average, every, and that's every family in the UK, consumes about 350 glass bottles and jars a year. Whoa, that's a lot of glass. Plastic? Plastic makes up 13% of our average household bin on Merseyside and can take hundreds of years before it even starts to break down. Both of these resources are far too valuable to bury away in the ground, especially when we could be recycling them. Hang on. Jack, what are you doing? If plastic, plastic takes never, or nearly forever, to break down, then remind me again why we're still burying them at landfill sites. Well, that's the big question. Because in the past there were more sites with plenty of space available, but now that space is running out fast, which means having to transport our waste further and further to new sites, which is proving more and more expensive. And although landfill sites are carefully monitored, they do have their drawbacks too. Like what? Well, if you go behind the camera, I'll tell you, OK? <laughs> OK. My turn next? OK, your turn next. Now, okay. ready to film? Yeah. Just changing the shot, Anika. Okay. And action. Biodegradable materials rot quickly and produce gases like methane, which in turn contributes to climate change. Methane is 23 times more potent than carbon dioxide and has a huge impact when released into the atmosphere. Okay, this is freaking me out a bit here. Chill out, Jack. This isn't about freaking anyone out, it's just about informing our viewers changing the way we do things and the way we think. That's all, just think of it as a wake-up call. Oh, but before we go any further, let's have a look at what happens at landfill sites. Okay, and cut. This is a typical landfill site. It is basically a huge hole in the ground where the waste you can't recycle ends up. Your rubbish is buried here, where it rots and breaks down. I found out that modern landfills are not like they used to be. They are in fact engineered to very high specifications. Wow, Anika, your facts are always boss. Why, thank you, Jack. I'm flattered. Uh, but what did you find out? Well, at sites like this one, there are a number of control systems in place. You know, to monitor things and take into account geology, water and potential pollution. Waste is added into even layers until the maximum limit allowed and then the landfill site is closed. The monitoring still continues, and then those in charge have a responsibility to restore the site. You know, into something suitable, such as a park like this one. Technically, Anika, I call this a woodland. Oh, Jack, behave. What I'm saying is, we found out that although landfill isn't exactly the best option for all our waste, modern technology means old landfill sites can be put to good use in the future. <sighs> OK, I'm with you. Well, I'm well and truly awake now. But when did you become more knowledgeable, like, green warrior? Well, I always like to know what's going on in the world. Plus, you big dope, I've got a script. Oh, the old script routine, eh? 
Okay, what do I say next? Oh, well, where are we? Page 8, shot 15. Ah, okay. And Nico reads out telling Jack what he says, and you say, quote, this is interesting to know, Nika, but I just put my rubbish in a bin bag and forget about it. And then I say, oh, you're not alone, Jack. That's what a lot of people do. That is interesting to know, Nika. But I put my rubbish in a bin bag and forget about it. <laughs> you're not alone, Jack. That's what a lot of people do. See? Told you. Whoa. How cool is that? <gasps> Jack, you giving me an idea? I have. Let's find out. Just what happens after you've put your rubbish out to be collected. Yeah, let's do that. Come on. What? Anika. An Anika, hold up. Can I see the next one? Anika. Ugh. It's not very comfy in here, Anika. They're for our rubbish, not for us. So, are you ready, Jack? And action. So, once your rubbish bin has been collected, it's usually taken to a waste transfer station then bulked up into large vehicles, taken and buried into a landfill site, similar to the one we saw earlier. Any recyclable value it has is lost when it's buried in the ground. Remember, just because something that's not wanted doesn't mean it has no value. So what you're saying is, Jack, lots of things can be recycled and made into new things. Exactly. This would save on landfill space and save raw materials and energy. So, is there an alternative? Yep. I knew you'd say that. Want to share it with us? Sure do. Any time you're ready. Oh yeah, sorry. Things already in place in Merseyside are recycling bins where you can separate your rubbish. You could also use household waste recycling centres or units found in supermarket car parks. So there should be recycling options available for most people? Correct. Recycling is about learning new habits and finding ways to reuse those things we no longer want or use and realising this because they may still be of value to somebody else. Lots of stuff found in your bins if separated out can be reused and recycled from cardboard, paper, glass bottles and jars through to steel and aluminium cans and plastic bottles. This is Bidston Material Recovery Facility or MRF or MRF for short. We found out that mixed dry recyclables that are collected by your local council are brought here to be separated and sorted to sound for. Reprocessing. I've, I found that one out. Yes, Jack, but we'll come to that later. At Bidston, we saw that the facility works by a system of separation techniques. You know, separating your cardboard from your glass bottles, things like that. Lots of boss machinery assists with the sorting of the waste out, like the stuff you're watching. Once sorted, they are now called secondary raw materials. And are loaded for their next journey to local reprocessing facilities. Ah, oh, thanks for this, Anika. Smile, you've got to do your bit, Jack. Aww. This is a recycling site. These guys here reprocess our plastic and aluminium. Do you mean our Coke bottles, Anika? That's exactly what I mean, Jack. Here, they take used plastic bottles and aluminium, and it goes through an advanced sorting and cleaning process. It is then made into new material. Like my mum's garden furniture? No, Jack. I meant new plastic and aluminium products. But... Actually, this may then go on to make your mum's garden furniture. Not to mention the pond boardwalks we saw at the woodland earlier. Oh, cheers, Anika. <laughs> Jack, what are you laughing at? Nothing, Anika. Nothing. <laughs> uh, what's that on your toe? <laughs> well, remember that film we watched about paper? Yes. Well, these guys take our waste paper and magazines through a whole process to make new paper. It is then sent to other sites to make our school books, new magazines and newspapers. Well, you know what I mean. So we don't have to cut down another forest the size of Wales to do our coursework, Anika? Absolutely not, Jack. 
It's all very well knowing what happens, Anika. But how can I start making a difference in my life? Well, that's up to you to decide, Jack. I mean, you need to start looking at ways of reducing waste. Maybe even whether you recycle at home. If not, why not suggest it? Yeah, will do. Thanks, Anika. And Jack, come on, quick. Quick. Recycling only starts when we buy new products made by the materials. We need to make sure that recycling and minimising waste becomes second nature to us. Rubbish. Cheers, Anika. You know it needs sorting out. <laughs> Did you get it? Sorting out? Did yeah. You get it? Oh. Unfortunately, I do. I'm meant to be the comedic sidekick. Anyway, it's down to you to start making a difference in your home. See, See ya. ya. Do you like that one, Jack? Did you get that one? It was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Where did you get it? Was it recycled from your dad? Oh, very <laughs> Jack, did you know? Each tonne of paper recycled saves 17 trees as well as their surrounding habitat and wildlife. 7,000 gallons of water is saved and 4,200 kilowatts less in electricity is used. Whoa! Electrifying fact, Anika! Did you know, Jack, if you lined up all the polystyrene foam cups made in just one day, they would circle the whole air? Talking of cups, go get us a drink, Anika. Jack, in one hour we produce enough waste in the UK to fill the whole Albert Hall. Well, not much space left for us then. Come on, Anika, that's enough laying around for one day. Let's get recycling.